I know many of you have sent me emails concerning evolution and telling me how stupid I am that I cannot understand how evolution is a reality. And my response to you was that evolution is not a provable theory because you cannot see evolution in a laboratory. You can't prove it. There is no atom smasher where you have the various particles and you can show a photograph, for example. You, what you have is you have fossils, you have uh, similar creatures, but you really don't have evidence that one thing caused another thing. A protozoa became a cockroach, which became a fish, which became a, a walking something or other, which became a chimpanzee, which became a man. You have nothing to show that directly. You have a fossil record. The fossil record, as anybody knows, is incomplete, and there's no proof that one thing had anything to do with the other. That's just a matter of fact, and you know that. The, the reason for the acceptance of evolution is the preponderance of certain things that seem to follow evolution. Now, evolution doesn't predict very many things. Evolution is random. And evolution does not say that there's going to be something like DNA. Once DNA was discovered, the evolutionists, of course, adopted it because it's a reality. But evolution does not predict anything. It didn't predict DNA or RNA. It didn't predict uh, genetics. Genetics is irrelevant to ev evolution. Genetics is a reality. Evolution is the development of one species into another, the origin, origin of species. And it's a theory. It's a nice theory. But the theory is based upon the desire to supplant God as the master of the universe. Now, those of us who believe don't need to throw out God if you accept evolution. The reason why I never accepted evolution is because it just did not speak to me. There's certain things that speak to me, certain things that you say, ah, that's it, that's good, that's right. It never showed me that it was right because God didn't have to make a human being coming from an animal. God could have made a human being that way, just that way. So here we are. What do you tell me? You tell me that there is a record in the DNA which proves a common origin for the chimpanzee. That there is a, there was an, uh, uh, an ape-like creature which is the ancestor of both the chimpanzee and the hominids. And the reason for that is because we share certain elements on the genome, on the um, genetics, the genetic elements of human DNA and chimpanzee DNA. That's the best that I can articulate it. I know that there are technical terms. I understand the technical terms. I just don't remember. My memory ain't that good nowadays. So we'll just keep it very simple. The KISS method. Keep it simple, stupid. One stupid rabbi. Now listen to me. You've told me that because there are ERVs, which is the breakdown of the remnants of a virus, the virus created some kind of an imprint on the gene of a particular creature, and it was then given over to all other subsequent um, descendants. And since we have ERVs that are exactly in the same place as the chimpanzee in several places. Somebody said 16, I saw seven. I saw that there are seven. Maybe they discovered a few, mother, few others. And that's a proof that we have a common ancestor. There are many factors that make this not a proof. A, we really are in the infant stages of understanding what ERVs are. We really don't know what they are. People claim that they know what they are, but the truth is we as yet do not really understand them fully. So before you understand something fully, you can't make a declarative statement that this is an absolute proof for evolution. You have to first understand the ERV. Now, I'm, 
I'm very impressed by the mathematics some of you throw out. I'll show the mathematics to a friend of mine who is an expert in statistics, but I will tell you the following. I've seen counter-arguments, and the counter-arguments in plain language work like this. There are a certain number of ERVs that we share with the chimpanzee. There are ERVs that are found in the chimpanzee that are not found in the human but found in the gorilla. My question is, if we are related to the chimpanzee, not the gorilla, because the gorilla came off at a different time, then we should have all of the ERVs of the chimpanzee. We don't. Now, for those of you out there in Rio Linda, there are tens of thousands of these ERVs in the genome. Tens of thousands. Of the tens of thousands, seven, or according to some, it's 19, uh, are shared by the chimpanzee. There should be a lot more 